Hello everyone and welcome to my first World of Warships video. I've been streaming World of Warships on Twitch on Fridays for a few months now. I'm still an average player at best depending on what ship I'm in. And if you're looking for best ship practices in top-notch games, there are already a lot of YouTubers doing a great job of that. Instead, in this series I'm going to show you four consecutive games with a particular ship in each episode. I have no idea how the battles will go. I just press record and see what happens. So, suspense is what I'm aiming for here. And just so I don't embarrass myself too much in the first episode, I begin with my favorite ship so far, the Isokaze. I've only gotten up to tier 7 ships, so I could probably change my mind eventually. But here is the first battle lineup. I am in the lowest tier, so with uh, tier 5s and tier 6s. And we will have to see how it goes. I'm not going to give any particular expert commentary here. I'm just going to tell you what I was thinking during the battle. And hopefully this will give a sense of how it usually is playing this ship for an average player. I mean, I will consider myself average, uh, though with the Isokaze I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. I feel very comfortable with it. It's nice and maneuverable. Here I am sneaking up into A. I think that the standard job of a destroyer on this map or in any domination map is to try and cap as soon as possible. So I'm sneaking into A trying to do that. And I'm slowing down, I'm going to hit smoke in order to make sure that I can remain undetected in the in the capture area. After all, if you get hit in the capture area, uh, there goes the opportunity to cap. I toss out some torps at that Cleveland. Uh, not expecting too much. And the Cleveland is a pretty deadly enemy for me. Uh, the Cleveland is pretty good at hunting destroyers, i found anyway. It's not the most maneuverable of ships though, and here he makes an unfortunate turn showing his broadside to my torpedoes, and if my torpedoes uh, didn't get him, those other torpedoes from my fellow destroyer probably would have. After taking a uh, good measure of the situation and making sure there's no menace behind me, I proceeded towards the Bagioni there, and just a reminder, my detection range is 6 kilometers, and you can actually see this outlined on the map there. My detection range is reading 5.9 there, it's really 6 kilometers, and my torpedo range is 7 kilometers. So the trick with the Isokaze is to try and launch the torpedoes uh, while still 6 kilometers away. Here I don't get to do that because the Bajoni is already very close, and actually all those other torpedoes get to him long before mines do, uh, so at least he wasn't a threat. The Bajoni is a very serious opponent. I haven't ever played the ship myself. Uh, I have the Cleveland, but not the Bagioni, but uh, I have fallen at the hands of many Bagionis. Uh, here I'm going up against the uh, Battleship New York, uh, a slow foe, but with a lot of health, and I've got a Farragut in support, that is a tier 6 destroyer on the, Amer uh, on the American line, helping me out here, and really going in there. Yeah, I don't know, the New York, I don't know what he was aiming at, actually. But uh, possibly he couldn't really turn around his guns towards either one of us right now. I'm just wantonly shooting torpedoes. My guns are now active against the aircraft. I had turned the anti-aircraft guns off uh, while I was trying to cap A so that they wouldn't give me away. But now they are on. And so it's a matter of patience. The Farragut has launched torpedoes. I have launched torpedoes now. I'm getting incoming fire, but I'm weaving a little bit to make sure that doesn't do me any harm. There are torpedo planes there. My initial salvos of torpedoes did not come even close. So I release a few more. The New York is well on his way to perishing. Lots of guns are trained on him. So after releasing some more torpedoes, I decide to just... Uh, leave him to his fate and proceed on to where the Farragut is going which is actually where the carriers are, the enemy carriers but yeah the New York seems to be on fire or something, he's taking damage fairly regularly and unable to repair it so yeah I'm pretty satisfied that that's one threat taken care of so I proceed on to the carriers. Now I'm a little bit late to this particular game. Uh, we've got the Farragut there and the Omaha and the Farragut is... Oop, I actually got the New York. Um, not my intention to actually finish him off. That was pure luck obviously. And he was down to like 2000 health so 
Uh, any anybody with guns could have easily taken him out. I almost feel a little bit guilty about taking credit for the destroying him. But anyway, uh, by the time I get over here, the Farragut's already taken care of the first carrier. But then he perishes. There's a Svetlana there. And I also see on the map that there is a destroyer up north harassing one of our battleships. But the battleship is uh, dealing with him pretty well. And I decide to support the Omaha here against the Svetlana and uh, Zwiho. And you can see it's, uh, it's quite a fight. Um, I'm trying to be sneaky, but I am detected because of all the planes and all. I'm targeting the Zwiho here, but the only way I would actually be able to shoot my torps at it is if it stayed still. And it's not. It's uh, moving in such a way that I would have to have my torps go through the island. That's not going to happen. I try and tilt uh, a little bit in order to see if I can get my torps into the right position, but that that's not that's not going to work. So I have to switch to Svetlana as my target. Come on, switch to Svetlana. There we go. And uh, but. But I just decided to go on to the other side of the island and follow the carrier instead. Because the Svetlana isn't uh, popping out and it shot those torps. And I wanted to avoid those. Here, the Zwiho is in really, really close range. Now, he should know basically where I am. So, this is probably a bad move. But I don't know what else he could have done. Again, a lucky thing where he's pretty much close to perishing and one torpedo hit would have finished him off. Now for the Svetlana. Now the Svetlana has a lot of health and also has has its own torpedoes, I believe. But uh, those torpedoes came from the planes. I actually end up using the carrier's body to help me to stop in time, avoiding that particular torpedo. And that ends up putting me into a good position to shoot torpedoes at the Svetlana now. The Omaha has also shot torpedoes at the Svetlana, but uh, oh, the, 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 well, uh, the Omaha is pretty close to finishing the Svetlana off there. But the Omaha is pretty low in health too. Here again, the Svetlana is almost done for, and I happen to launch torpedoes and get the kill. Nothing to be too proud of, but you know, exciting. It was exciting. After that, you can see the opposing team had just one destroyer left, and we all headed into C to cap that and finish this off. Uh, the remaining destroyer did was quite a menace, and you can see it launching torpedoes at our battleship there. And there it is, an Isokaze, in fact, an opposing Isokaze, same ship as mine. And I try and. Uh, Try and attack him. He's got more health than I do, but uh, you know, either way, it's like one torpedo hit will finish either one of us, and certainly a lot of gun damage. Here, I finally use my guns. Don't do that often, but the game ends before I can even find out what happens there. So it was a victory, and it was actually during a times three weekend, and so got a lot of XP. You can see the actual experience points I got there: a thousand one hundred ninety-nine base. Uh, only 26,000 damage done because, of course, when my torps hit, a lot of these ships were already pretty close to perishing. And so it was just a little bit, they didn't do their full damage on the ships that they hit. Alright, so, but I mean, certainly a very good start overall. I survived the battle, that's always nice. Um, and here we have the second battle, which was a tier 3, tier 4, tier 5, so I was middle tier on this one. And we will see how this goes. Different map, obviously, Solomon Islands, and since I was on the southern side of our group, I decided to head south and see what was there. That's a little bit harder than heading northeast. Uh, the northeast I prefer because of that one little island there that you can hide behind. This is a little bit out in the open, so I sneak around trying to use this island to my advantage. There's a Nevni that is a tier 5 destroyer. It mainly uses its guns rather than torpedoes and has uh, range on me. My guns are pretty low range. And my torpedoes are 7 kilometers. So I try and wait until it's closer because it didn't poke out just yet. And uh, here I'm just sort of making circles to see if I can get it within my torpedo range. And I'm detected. And it's not the Nevni, it's actually a Minakaze, which is the tier 5 Japanese destroyer. So 
the destroyer I upgraded to. The Minikaze is definitely more deadly than the Isokaze, and so this is a tough one for me. But I try my best. The Nevni is not going to make it easy either. And it's pretty obvious who they're gunning for, but I do have support. I have a cruiser and a battleship. The Minikaze launches torpedoes, and I dodge those and try and get into position to launch mine. Uh, but that puts me in position to another set of torpedoes, and I take one on the tail there. At this point, I probably should have slowed down to make my maneuvering a little bit better. I think I would have maneuvered a lot better if I was like at three quarters or half. I, maybe the Minikaze is actually doing that. I can't tell. He's about well, a smokestack. Seems to indicate he's going pretty fast. But ouch! So I took one on the tail. Obviously, did not really prove myself in that battle. Uh, no need to see the score on that. It was it was pretty bad. On to the third one. Uh, yeah, uh, no no substantial benefit from that one, no damage, yeah. In this next battle, we had Tier 3, Tier 4, Tier 5, and because of that division on the opposing team, that was, uh, they, they were probably at a disadvantage there with the South Carolina and the Wakatake there. So uh, here I go into, into A to cap again. This is domination on the street map, so very similar to the first battle that I showed you. And I'm doing basically the same pattern here. Can't guarantee I always do this thing on this map. It depends on where I am and how many destroyers we have. Uh, sometimes I do go into B. But you can see I'm just trying to hide out in the smoke until I finish capping the area. The key thing is to not get hit while I'm trying to cap. Our other destroyers are basically leaving it to me to do this. Which is fine. Now... If something comes into range, I will shoot torpedoes at it. Sort of waiting for that. Kyle's through there. There we go. And it's turning. But I also see the Kuma there, so I decide to save one set of torpedoes for it. But I failed to take into account the position of the Kamikaze there on my team. And so, watching this, I am uh, biting my nails hoping that the Kamikaze does not get hit by my torpedoes. It should be easy for him to dodge them, but, you know, uh, if he's occupied, and he is occupied with the opposing destroyer there. So I was worried that he would get a nasty surprise, but it, it turned out alright. Uh, you can see the Kamikaze is already half health and the torpedo actually hit the Kuma there. So uh, that, that ended well for my team and uh, I was relieved. Except like right at the beginning when I first used torps, I have not torped my own side at all. And I did not want to break that streak. So, and I don't think I've ever killed anybody on my side with torp even at the beginning. So here, I see that my torpedoes do kill the opposing team's Karlsruhe. And so that was good. I was still feeling a little bit jittery about the whole kamikaze thing and uh, hoping that uh, I did not inconvenience him too much. Here's an opposing kamikaze coming into close range to me. And I'm trying to protect A here, otherwise uh, he would try and cap it. So here we go. I launch torpedoes, he's using guns. Guns are a good thing to use. But I didn't want to give him too much angle right now. Especially since, as you can see, he's going to be launching torps at me. But this is going to be a tough fight for me if I'm going to continue using torpedoes. I slow down to avoid those torpedoes. They glide on right past me. That that was a lucky, lucky uh, situation there. That could have gone very badly. I'm not in general very good at, at facing other destroyers actually probably because I underuse the guns I will eventually resort to the guns here but I'm still trying for torps it's only when I see that he's like fully occupied by some of my other friendly ships that I really think that the guns oh and I'm, I'm also trying to protect myself with the island so I'll let loose with another set of torpedoes here, but then I go to the guns. 
the kamikaze has been occupied with my allies and so I take a few shots but my allies finish him off I'm down to 1066 health so that is well not much and the kamikaze did shoot a few torpedoes before he parted with the situation on the north side pretty much clear except for one cruiser I decide to head in to B and try and cap that and there's really nothing in range to stop me and then after capping B I aim for that South Carolina now there are planes spotting me and so I use the smoke just to avoid them pointing me out but I'm still going full steam here I'm not trying to hide in the smoke I just wanted to uh, make sure to obscure my position while the planes were passing overhead and again I'm going to try and shoot my torpedoes between six kilometers and seven kilometers so that the Carolina does not see me but then I notice that the South Carolina is taking a lot of damage from my friendly ships and I have finally spotted the carrier there and so I change my targets see the key to all this is make sure they do not know a destroyer is coming if they don't know a destroyer is coming they won't know the torpedoes are coming necessarily if they see a destroyer close by they'll know the torpedoes are coming now of course the carrier just spotted me with his planes so the fact that my detection range is only six kilometers does not help and so he started backing away from his position he seemed sort of beached there and so those torpedoes did not hit but then I followed him he tried to hide behind that island uh, quite successfully actually this is a very good tactic and he's launching planes he's got bombers he's got torpedoes he's not gonna make this easy on me I am the clear target here yep yep he's gonna try his best there the torpedo planes are coming the bombers are generally more effective against destroyers than the torpedo planes because the the torpedoes carried by the planes are really slow and easy to dodge unless you're caught by surprise which happens too obviously but uh, here I was not caught by surprise the torpedo planes were very well in sight and I couldn't see those and now now the target carrier is within three kilometers or so and I go with some torpedoes it's pretty tough though, uh, Captain Picard 1701D, right? 1701D I should say, yes. So here we go, and unfortunately he makes a bad turn right at the end there, and takes both torpedoes. Unlucky break there, uh, but eventually he gets me. I only had that thousand health after all. But I did let loose with two torpedoes in time. And so one of them got him. And so it's just a flesh wound. And uh, I got two kills on that. And taking a look at the final statistics, this is how it shaped up. I didn't have the, the same, same bonus that I had on the first game. So uh, 2,318 XP, but it was a pretty good score for me. Team score 1,471, so we're at the top there. So that was probably the best game of the four. Uh, well, darn spoilers. Uh, most of the damage I did, though, was to the Langley. And he was, I mean, carriers are sort of sitting ducks if, uh, if a destroyer gets within that kind of range. So this is the fourth battle, uh, tier three and tier four, strictly. So I'm upper tier this time and this had some interesting hijinks this is a very familiar map and uh, since I was on the west side I had to go into that very familiar sort of cove which is a very much destroyer territory if any uh, cruisers wander there it's pretty easy to torpedo them as a countermeasure to that of course if there are two carriers per side as there were here Carriers will send planes to try and spot what destroyers might be lurking and the opposing carriers or at least one of them definitely did send planes over and made sure to spot me briefly. There we go. 
so I was detected, and so the enemy team knew that I was there. Not that they were, they would have been surprised that a destroyer was lurking in that area, though. Uh, here, an enemy destroyer is uh, Dursky, a tier 3 destroyer, is facing off against me. That's a Soviet destroyer, so uh, more guns than torpedoes, but uh, still torpedoes. Actually, I, I mostly used torpedoes with the Dursky when I played it. I narrowly avoid those torpedoes. I'm very much focused on where the Dursky's going to be. So what happens is I don't really notice where my friendly Campbell Town ends up. And so you see him very, very briefly there. But I'm, I'm looking at the St. Louis here because he's coming around that bend and I want to torp him. But I cannot turn away in time to avoid this Campbell Town. Now he's thankfully uh, deploying smoke there. So uh, with my little my little derpski, <laughs> um, I uh, we are relatively safe at least because we can't be seen. You can see I don't have the detected indicator there. But this was very embarrassing. I'm trying to back up. I'm uh, full reverse. But something about the way we've hit has sort of caught us together. And I have to rely on the Campbell Town to try and break free. He's going forward full steam, I think, still. Which would be the reasonable thing to do. I'm trying to go back, but I'm not succeeding. I think I'm getting pulled by him, actually. Uh, we got caught in a really weird way. Now, trying to make uh, lemonade out of lemons, I, I do keep an eye on that St. Louis. Sorry, I say St. Louis. It's St. Louis, I know. Uh, 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 I don't know why I say St. Louis. It's just a thing. I accidentally beach, which is not very convenient, but the torps are headed straight for that St. Louis, and that's the end of it. I don't know what the Campbell Town guy thought of me, but uh, I can't imagine anything good. Anyway, beyond that, there's a Wix there, that is a tier 3 American destroyer. I had a lot of fun with the Wicks when I played around with it. I, I would like to play around with it uh, further. We're currently working up the American Destroyer line. I've got a Nicholas and a Farragut right now, tier 5 and tier 6. There is a Miyogi and one of those torpedoes hit. I have no idea what it hits actually. Um, it was an enemy, but I don't know if it was the the Wicks at all, or some other enemy ship. So here I was originally aiming for the Miyogi, but the Arkansas Beta there got within range and had a better angle to it, so I decided to go for that. I'm very much detected here, there are a lot of battleships around. Very vulnerable sort of position for me. The Wicks is still there, so it wasn't the Wicks that got hit. Now I'm sort of surprised, but uh, Arkansas Beta will manage to avoid these torpedoes. It sure seemed like they were going like straight for him, but uh, uh, the Arkansas Beta probably sped up and so managed to slip past all of those. It's quite a spread. The nice thing about the Isokaze compared to the later tier destroyers is that it has a fast reload rate. There's the Wix again. And I try not to give any angle to him. Uh, he will be trying to torp me. And also shoot me. And of course, having my broadside to him is still bad. Having my broadside to the battleships is worse. So I'm trying to keep it all angled right. Slip between the Wix's torpedoes. And uh, the Arkansas Beta. I shot two torpedoes at the Wix. But they're uh, making a beeline for the Arkansas Beta instead. I mean, the Wicks could easily dodge those anyway, so it was uh, a good bonus to have the Arkansas Beta headed in that direction. I finally used my guns to minor effect, and actually one of my torpedoes hit the Wicks. That was a, quite a surprise. I was thinking we were going to have to duke it out with the guns, and I was not relishing that thought because the Wicks has better guns. Uh, there are torpedoes from, I think, the Wicks uh, going right past us behind. The Wyoming's in front. I think about shooting the Wyoming. I am detected anyway. Uh, two torpedoes hit, I think, the Arkansas Beta again. And then the carriers decide to finally torp me. And that's the end of that. During the wrap-up, I found out that the Arkansas Beta was not the only battleship that bore the brunt of my torpedoes. 
Uh, here we see that I did 89,000 damage, which was very good. Um, I did do damage to the Capel Town, sorry about that, that was pretty bad. And 1746 was the XP, not a huge multiplier there. I got killed by the carrier, as we know, finally those uh, torpedo planes did their job. And, uh, you know, karma and everything. Uh, I was at the top of the XP board. And that was largely because of the torps I managed to get on the battleships, but really it was it was purely by chance. Uh, if we take a look at the detailed report, we can see that. There we go. Data loading. And here we see, well, the St. Louis was definitely intentional. The Wyoming, I, I never aimed for the Wyoming. Uh, he sort of drifted into my torpedoes, so that was purely luck. The Arkansas beta, obviously, I was trying to aim for and uh, somehow the Wyoming caught those torps that were meant for the uh, Arkansas Beta and the Wicks. Alright, so uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions for this series, please do leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.